Here at Oklahoma Gardening, we don't like to apply pesticides if we don't have to. We employ a lot of cultural practices, we grow resistant varieties, and we grow plants that are well adapted so we keep our pesticides to a minimum. But on occasion, we'll have an infestation of a crop or we'll have a buildup of pests on some valuable plants and we do have to get out the sprayer and apply some pesticides. But they can be applied effectively and safely if we follow the regulations and all of the instructions. Well today I'd just like to talk to you a little bit about pesticide safety in the garden. And it all starts right down here with the product. It's very important, read the label. Read the label, read the label. Right here on the package you can see that uh, this Malathion has almost like a little book here. It's got tons and tons of information, different uh, plants that can be sprayed, different pests to be sprayed, and it also lists the rate. Now the rate of mixture has to be followed precisely. You may be thinking, well I've got a lot of bugs on my plants and I want to double the rate to make sure I kill them. Don't do that. That's a federal offense here in Oklahoma to apply at higher the rate than what is specified. It's also a federal offense to apply less than the rate here in Oklahoma. So make sure you follow those directions very closely and do exactly what it says to do. Another thing to think about whenever we're applying pesticides to, is to use the proper protective equipment or the proper protective clothing. We want to wear a pair of trousers or long pants. We definitely don't want to be out spraying in a pair of shorts to get uh, pesticide on our legs. So long trousers, an old pair, old pair of trousers are a good idea. Long sleeves are also important when applying pesticides. We don't want to wear a short sleeve shirt. We definitely don't want to wear a tank top or anything that's uh, going to be showing off our belly buttons when we're out spraying pesticides in the garden. A pair of rubber boots are also a good idea to be uh, wearing when you're applying pesticides. We don't want to wear leather boots or tennis shoes or anything like that because those materials can soak up the pesticide and it's hard to get them out of the shoes. So rubber boots, those can be cleaned. And when you put the boots on, make sure your pants come over the top of the boots. You don't want to tuck your pant legs inside the boots and that's because the pesticide can uh, hit the pants and travel down and kind of uh, collect around your feet. So again, when you put your boots on, put your pants over the boots whenever you're going to be spraying. A pair of chemical proof gloves are also important and required. These are rubber gloves. Rubber gloves are a good, a good choice most of the time. If the label states that a different type of gloves are needed, we'll have to get a different type of gloves for those particular pesticides. But rubber gloves are good. Again, you don't want to use leather or cloth because those can trap the pesticide and uh, we can't hardly get rid of it, get it out of the material. Some goggles are also a good idea. This will help keep the uh, mist out of your eyes while you're spraying. Also, there are lots of instances where people are mixing pesticides and the uh, container gets dropped or knocked over and splashing occurs and that can get in your eyes. So if you have a pair of goggles that will keep that from happening. These goggles have little vents on them that uh, keep them from fogging up in a humid environment. If you want to be even more protective you could go with something like this face shield and keep all splashing and mist away from your eyes and your, and your face as well. Now if you're going to be spraying above your head some sort of hat is a good idea. You don't want to wear a straw hat because the, uh, the weave is not tight enough and you can get some mist coming through there and you can get a little bit of exposure. Something like a, a raincoat or a rain hat, something that has a, a hood on it that's uh, rubber or uh, a material that's, that can keep that, that pesticide away from your, your head and your scalp is, is a good idea. If you can't find anything else, a rain hat, a hat sort of like this, even though it's cloth, will work to keep the mist off of, your, uh, off of your head and your face. If there are any little breathing hose, you can just put a piece of tape over those to keep the pesticide out. But uh, again, be sure and wash this immediately afterwards. Now some pesticides 
require that you use a respirator. We've got one right down here. That way you won't be breathing the mist or the vapors or fumes. And if the pesticide, if the label on the pesticide specifies a respirator, don't use a dust mask. This won't do any good at all. It won't keep the mist, won't keep the vapors from uh, being inhaled. So make sure that uh, you read that label. Sometimes the label will even specify a particular type of respirator. These cartridges on the respirator can be removed and replaced. They're usually good for about eight hours of spraying time. Well, once you've finished spraying, it's a good idea to wash up all this stuff. While you still got your gloves on, just go and, and, and wash up those gloves. Wash your hands with water and detergent. Wash all of this equipment. The clothing change immediately when you're finished spraying. Put this in the wash. Keep it separate from the other laundry. Wash it by itself. And then, of course, take a shower, wash your hair, get all that pesticide residue off of your body. It's important that our pesticides be stored in a safe manner. We want them out of the reach of children. We keep ours in this little pesticide cabinet here in our garden shed, and this is always locked up. We always want to keep our pesticides maybe in a locked cabinet, an upper cabinet in a garage, or a shed. Make sure children can't get to them. Whenever you have finished with a pesticide container, it needs to be disposed of in the proper way. Don't use it to store any other materials. You definitely don't want to put any food items in a pesticide container. You also don't want to put pesticides in any other type of container. There's a story of a lady out in California who went out to her garden shed, found a bottle of cough syrup. Her husband had been coughing. She thought that maybe he had just taken it out there while he was gardening. She took it back in the house. Later that night, her son was coughing. She gave him some of this cough syrup. He had a bad reaction. Come to find out it was some insecticide that a neighbor had given her husband and put it in a cough syrup bottle. Luckily, the child was okay, but again, never put any pesticides in different types of containers. It's also a good idea to keep children and to keep pets out of the area whenever we're mixing or applying pesticides. Well, right down here, we've got a couple of our pesticide containers, and if you look close, you can see that we've got them labeled. This one says herbicide only, and this one is for insecticide only. And we do recommend having different sprayers for your herbicides and your insecticides. If, for instance, you had been spraying herbicides in a container and then you rinsed it out and there will still most likely be a little bit of residue in the sprayer and then you mix in some insecticides, you spray some insects that are on some of your valuable plants, they could pick up some of that residue and cause some damage. So again, keep those two sprayers for the different types of pesticides and herbicides. If you have a spill whenever you're mixing or applying pesticides, the spill can be absorbed with something like sawdust or kitty litter it is also a good absorbent material. Vermiculite will also work well to absorb spilled insecticides or pesticides. Vermiculite is a component of a lot of our soilless mixes, so being gardeners, we might have some of that on hand. But uh, once those, those spills are soaked up, we need to dispose of that material as well. Whenever you spray, it's important to find a day when the wind isn't blowing very much. And in Oklahoma, I know that can be a little bit hard to do, but try to find a time of the day when there's not a lot of wind blowing and that way we won't get any drift over to our neighbors or to any of our desired plants. Whenever you spray, whenever you mix up some chemical, only mix up the amount that you're going to use in that one day. We don't want to leave pesticides in our sprayers for any amount of time because those chemicals can deteriorate the o-rings and valves and you can ruin your sprayer by leaving pesticides sitting in your sprayer. Well, once you finish spraying and we need to clean up our sprayer and the uh, steps to take would be to release the pressure. 
just pull up this little knob here, releases the pressure. You don't want to open that while it's pressured up. You can get a, a face full of spray, but then take the, uh, the lid off and then do a triple rinse. Just fill this with water, slosh it around a little bit, and then dump it. Fill it up again, do the same thing, dump it, and then fill it about halfway, pressure it up, and then spray that remaining water through the hose and the wand to clean those out. Well, I really like this new sprayer by Chapin. It's the new Spray and Go model. It's got a really neat 10-foot coiled hose here. You can leave the sprayer on the ground, even spray hanging baskets. It's got a wide opening, so it lessens the possibility of splashing whenever you're, you're filling up the sprayer. And it's got this neat little shield. It looks like a duck foot here. Just attach that to the end of the wand there, and that will help better target the mist to your plants spray those weeds without getting any spray onto your desirable, desirable plants. Again, remember to read the label, read the label, read the label. Most important part of applying pesticides safely in your garden. 